My name is Whitney Williams, and I am here with uh, Dr. Jacob Dassinger. And what is your job here at University of South Alabama? I am an instructor in the Mathematics and Statistics Department, and have been here for about three years now. Okay. So why did you become an instructor? As after I got my master's degree, I uh, started adjuncting here at South and really enjoyed it. Um, wanted to pursue it as a career, so I got my PhD at Southern Miss, and I really like teaching versus the research aspect. So. And what are your most important learning goals in classes? Uh, number one goal is that you learn something. So uh, everybody comes in with a different background, different uh, mathematical knowledge, and especially in the elementary math classes. So um, my main goal is to learn something and to learn, you know, why all the stuff we do, the algorithms we do, work. So you can be better teachers. Maybe. Okay. And what did you learn on the job that you wish you'd known before? Uh, that everybody has a different skill set. Um, I always assumed if you were in college that you'd have the same level of mathematical background. And that's just not the case. You have some very advanced students, some students that are weaker in math, and you kind of really need to tailor your lectures and material to both aspects. So you need to make sure you're not leaving behind the students who aren't as prepared, but you're not, you know, boring the and more advanced students. You gotta do a little bit of both. I wish I knew that. Mm, balance. Balance. Is everything. balance. <laughs> okay, and how do course objectives, which you said those are the same, kind of along the lines that elementary school teachers have, except ours are set by the state and yours are set by the college. How yes. do those uh, it really determines what we cover as, as far as the textbook and what textbook we pick. Because we get the freedom, um, we usually have a committee that picks textbook for particular courses and then the department as a whole usually decides the course objectives. So depending on the objectives, that'll affect what sections or chapters you cover in the book. So without those objectives, you'd have a very wide range of topics covered by different instructors because they're going to pick what they what they think is important. So you kind of need the course objectives to hone in so everybody kind of has the same course no matter what instructor you get. And do you and any other instructors get to have a hand in like changing it? Yes, yes. If we feel, you know, something should be covered or should not be covered, um, we can always, you know, bring it up to the department and present our reasons why and we can always add an objective or remove an objective. Um, not too long ago, we had something, we recently changed our math for elementary textbook because it didn't cover integers. And we felt that it should cover integers, even though, depending on what grade you teach, you're not really gonna get into it, but our old textbook didn't. We added the course objective of, you know, making sure you understand the algorithms for integers, negative numbers. So we brought that up, we changed textbooks and decided to go that way. Okay. How about how often do you think they change? Um, really depends on the faculty members. Usually when we get new faculty, they like to look at what we're doing and, you know, especially if they're coming from another university saying we should really cover this as opposed to, you know, topic A versus topic B. Um, we get maybe a course that a lot of one particular major enrolls it in like computer science takes a lot of um, discrete mathematics. If they call over here and say, can you guys start covering this topic more and not so much this topic, I mean, we'd be open to it. So it's just really, it's not really, we review it every year, but I wouldn't say we change anything every year. It just really depends on what the faculty suggest. And what advice would you give to new teachers? Uh, patience, 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 patience. <laughs> Um, you're like, just like in college, you're going to have a lot of students with different backgrounds and you can't assume they're all going to know, you know, if you're teaching third grade, maybe they didn't pick up everything in second grade. So, you know, you might have to go back and review some for some students. You're going to have some students who are advanced. So you got to have that balance again. So just be patient, have balance, uh, don't get frustrated and, you know, hopefully 
know, everything will work out good and you won't have, you know, students get behind or bored students. You know? Bored students can turn into bored students, students. Interruptive students and then that's even, that's even worse. So. And what question do you think I should have asked that I did not? Uh, let's see. How about, do you think, or do I think, that the standard should be raised for teachers? Well, do you? I, I do, actually. I, um, especially elementary school teachers, because you guys are, you got to be jack of all trades. You got to know, you got to be an expert in all the fields. Mm -hmm. And it just, it makes me cringe and breaks my heart when I overhear former students will say, I love English and history and I hate math, so we'll just, you know, spend the least amount of time on math as possible and then we'll just spend all day on, you know, science or something or history. And it's just, it's a hard job, man. It's, I, I envy you guys. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for answering all no, your questions. No problem, Whitney.